everyone and welcome to another Scots Way podcast and we've made the trip today to Braemar where we're going to talk to Alistair Roberts and Ross White and thank you both for coming along. Thank you. Uh, we're going to talk about your collaboration in residency, is that about the right term for it? Yeah. Um, new approaches to traditional music. So could you talk a little bit about the project? Uh, yeah, uh, well we were both approached by um, Sound Festival and Wooden Barn in Bankery. Oh yeah. Um, oh, it must have been last year, I think. It, was, it was, seems a long time ago. Yeah. Um, about about collaborating and uh, and then eventually um, uh, we weren't hearing anything for a while, but then eventually it just seemed to very quickly come together and uh, the idea is that uh, um, you know. This was obviously from a kind of folk back and traditional background. Uh-huh. Um, um, sort of. Sort of. <laughs> this is the trouble <laughs> I get into, so how do I refer to people? <laughs> you always miss something. I mean, use the right terminology. Maybe, I mean, maybe I'm more of a kind of versed in that than you are, much in a way. Yeah. 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 So. And I'm, because I'm, I'm more, uh, I guess, kind of electronic music. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so the idea was to stick us together in the room and see what happens. So, in terms of the new approaches to traditional music, I mean, what kind of you know, what kind of form is that taking? Well, so far we've been uh, working on uh, traditional songs and ballads, mm-hmm. uh, using this text and melodies. You know, I've been singing as I normally do and playing a bit of guitar. Ross has been doing electronics and playing the old church harmonium and yeah. he's also been um, kind of manipulating my voice in real time as I've been singing, you know, processing my voice. How's that been for you? It's been interesting, yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of collaboration, you've certainly, one of your more recent ones was Hurt a Song with Robin Roberts. That's right. And um, which looked at took St Kilda as a kind of um, inspiration. Is that the idea of coming to someone like Braemar, that similar idea? Um, Well, we... uh, I think, you know, the the idea of coming to Braemar wasn't Rossi's and it wasn't my idea. It was was just, uh, I think, I suppose it was the Wood End Barn decided to to place us here. But obviously, you know, we've been uh, trying to use the the, the, the... use the occasion of being here as an opportunity to, you know, explore the history and so on of the area and maybe kind of weave that into the work in some ways. You know, and some of the songs we've been doing are kind of set around this area. Mm-hmm. For example, we've been singing, we've been doing a song called The Baron of Brackley, which is from Deeside, and uh, uh, some songs from the sort of northeast of Scotland more generally. Okay. Um, so th- music and, and, and song to this area, but w- wider as well, you know, the other traditional songs as well. Yeah. Um, and the history in the area, is, is there anything that you've kind of taken on? Because I know a little bit, you know, the Stevenson links and Byron links and things like that. Has that kind of fed into anything? Or? Um, I think, I, I think it, it may feed into kind of possibly the sort of future... Uh, things that we do, um, we've I mean, we've spent quite a bit of time this week doing more kind of research into the local area. Um, whereas I think the the first week that we were here was as much sort of getting to know each other's practices and sure. you know just getting to know each other. But but this week we've we've been on uh, the history walk that we did <laughs> on a Tuesday night, which is very really interesting. Um, this morning we were over at the castle, Bremar Castle, getting the tour around there, and and there's, yeah, there's certain little sto- stories, little you know, local legends and things that, for me personally, are really appealing. Just, um, You've done st- stuff, Alistair, with in in traditional folk song before. Mm-hmm. Are you finding new ones from the say that you didn't know? Yeah, actually. Uh, Yesterday, uh, I heard of one. I was introduced to one by your brother. 
okay. called the, the, the Braemar Poacher that I, <laughs> I didn't know about before. Right. And we listened to some recording online of a, like a Belgian band doing it, like a, a Belgian Celtic band. You know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of strange. But it, yeah, it's, it's a good song. Um, do you think this is something that necessarily has to happen to kind of keep these songs going, is to look at them in new ways, or is it just the just the fact of doing them in new ways themselves is interesting? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure how to answer that. Okay. Uh, just the, the idea of, um, is this the first time that you've worked with someone, I mean, you've collaborated with a lot of people, mm-hmm. but uh, whose music is mainly electronic? Yeah, I suppose so, in, in, in terms of approaching these kind of traditional songs and, and ballads in, in that way, yeah, it's the first time I've really, really done that. Yeah, so it's been different. And are you, is, is it, obviously it's too early to see what the results are going to be, but um, yourself, Ross, did you, were you aware of the traditional music scene at all, or was this something that was kind of new um, to you? Uh, yeah, I was, I, was, I guess we're, um, you know, I live in Aberdeen and, uh, you know, there's a, there's a fair kind of, scene there and um, even there's a lot of, of sort of folk open mic sessions that I've kind of been on to and, um, but uh, yeah I, 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 I was aware of it but it, it was um, I don't know I, the officer says I think it was much more well versed than I was and so it was, it was kind of a um, I don't know what to say uh, it was slightly intimidating kind of world for me to get into. Why? Because I think I maybe had a lot of silly prejudices about, you know, folk and traditional music. But actually, I realised that a lot of the music I listened to has very often has very strong folk and yeah. traditional traits to it. So, um, is that something that you've found over your career that there is uh, when people hear the term folk? that they have certain prejudices, is that kind of breaking away now? No, it's possibly correct that people do have certain prejudices or preconceptions about the term, and it seems like a term that comes in and out of fashion every few years, you know, there'll, yeah. be, there'll be a new sort of folk revival every couple of years, and it's just... Yeah, I remember uh, a while ago there was new folk as an NU, yeah, I think I'm right. not quite sure what that's yeah. about that's um, about. But yet yeah, the music obviously endures through all of these mm-hmm. things. Yeah, but I mean, it's interesting for me because my, my background is kind of part, like I said earlier, you know, it's, it's kind of partly in that world, uh, but partly not because, you know, I, I, my father was a folk musician, but I grew up in a small town in, in central Scotland mm-hmm. where there was no music scene at all. There were, you know, there was like maybe like one Cayley band and they were pretty bad and it kind of put me off sort of traditional music, you know, yeah. and the whole attitude that they had and everything. And so it was only later in life when, when I moved to Glasgow and started, you know. But then when, even when I was in, moved to Glasgow, I was more in the sort of DIY scene, you know, rather than more sort of indie rock scene than the, than the folk scene to begin with. And my interest in those old songs and old music has grown over the years, mm-hmm. you know, where to a point where I, I do more kind of rigor, rigorous research into, into that, into the history of Scotland's music. I'm, I might be wrong about this, but it seems to me that those scenes, you say, in, in Glasgow in particular, seem to cross over a lot more than maybe they used to. Yeah. And, you know, they get people who may be playing in one band, you know, mm-hmm. uh, ending up in, in, in other ones. Is, is that right? Yeah, it's true. I mean, you could be like, you know, you could be playing in a session with someone one day and then they'll be in a band playing at Nice and Sleazy's the next day or something. Yeah. You know, it's a healthy kind of crossover, cross fertilisation. There's a knock at the door. I don't know whether we should stop there for a second and see in case it's important. Well, after a fruitless search for an umbrella, um, we're back here. We should say, actually, that we're in... Um, is it Braemar Church? Is that what it's St. Margaret's Church. St. Margaret's Church. Oh, we should get that right. There's four um, churches in Braemar. Yeah. It's a very <laughs> religious place. Yeah. Um, what's it? Why... Did you choose to record here, or was this basically where they stuck you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that. In, in the nicest possible way, that, that's... Kind of, I, I don't know, I think... 
I think that there's been sort of live musical performances here before, and uh, and yeah, I think, and the, and the acoustics are really amazing as well. So yeah, I think we thought this is a suitable place to have us. But yeah, it's a great place to work. Mm. Great acoustic, great to sing and play into. Mm. Yeah, um, it's a it's a fabulous building, isn't it? And obviously quite popular. <laughs> um, going back to the idea of, of uh, collaborating, um, I think you've both done collaborations before. Um, is it something that you enjoy doing? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think for for me, it's probably one of my favourite things ever. Um, I've, I've worked quite a lot with dancers and dance choreographers, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and that. I really love that. Uh, the, there's just something about the, the, the kind of process of creating with someone whose discipline is different from your own. It's mm. just I find it really, um, you know, you, you find you, you maybe have you make compromises and and that can be a really fruitful, productive thing to do. And, and it's also it's just incredibly enlightening and educational. Yeah. You know. So it kind of makes you rethink the way that you maybe you work because you see how other people take yeah, things on. Absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, I really love collaborating in different ways. You know, I've collaborated with poets like Robin Robertson, filmmakers, and uh, puppeteers, and you know, <laughs> um, I've enjoyed them with those all and finding common ground between music and those art forms. And uh, and I do a lot of solo gigs when mm -hmm. I you know, I'll just be playing and singing guitar, but it's. For me, that it, it feels much more rewarding to play as part of a group, you know. To, so I prefer to tour or do gigs with a band, you know, rather than playing solo. You're yeah, playing at the moment with the Furrow Collective, is that right? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Some group that I'm involved with. Yeah. yeah um, uh, and are you touring? With, are you going to be touring? Yeah, we we toured because the album came out in in uh, February, January, or February, and we toured then. But we're we're doing some more gigs in. September, and some we're doing some festivals, some some English folk festivals in the okay. summer, like Sidmouth and Whitby folk festivals. Um, Ross, you mentioned that you're from Aberdeen, and uh, you did, I think, the Witching Hour. Was that yeah. in Wooden Barn that you you yeah. that was produced? And that was <coughs> dance and film as well. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, I kind of, I made life really difficult for myself by calling, giving two projects the same name. <laughs> um, basically, uh, Wooden Barn had approached me about curating a series of events, and uh, they, they'd come given me a lot of um, freedom to, to decide what the, the kind of nature of the events would be. Um, so I'd invited. It was mainly kind of electronic, ambient music, but there was a lot. There was poetry and um, kind of theatre, um, that kind of thing, and uh, you know. You know really experimental sort of stuff but the, the final performance which was on the, or the final session that was on the 26th of June uh, and we did uh, this dance piece which was also called The Witching Hour um, that I've been working on for about a year and a half uh, so yeah it was <laughs> two, two different things so that you never call it part two or you know well the dancers kept telling me to come up a different name. Um, what do they know? <laughs> <laughs> and there's the true collaboration right there. Yes. Um, could you talk a little bit more about it? So it's such a fascinating project because, um, as far as I know, it's a, it was based on folk tales about a village at the base of Mount Fuji. Uh, a forest at the base. Of Mount right. Fuji. It's this um, forest called uh, Aukigahara, so I'll pronounce it, uh, or Jukai. Is sort of its nickname, and uh, that sort of translates as the Sea of Trees, and uh, it's a quite a grim uh, history surrounding it. Yeah, it uh, sounds it. Extremely, it's uh, one of the world's most um, popular. It seems like they're all in very inverted very commas. Popular in inverted commas destination for suicides. Uh, so there's you know, there's up to a hundred people take their lives there. Um, each year, 
but there's also this, uh, I, I started kind of doing a bit of research into the place. And, um, and the more I sort of, the more digging I did, the more I was finding connections with uh, of, uh, Japanese ghost stories and uh, all kinds of folk tales, and, uh, that kind of thing. So the piece eventually became about uh, uh, kind of combining both, so the, mm -hmm. the, sort of the kind of spiritual or, or um, supernatural elements with the uh, uh, with the, <laughs> the grim the realities, of it, the reality, yeah, the reality of it, and kind of putting the two together. But it was actually it was it was a really enjoyable uh, thing to to work on. And was it the place itself that kind of inspired a lot? Because I'm thinking with in relation to what you're doing here, you know, the place itself gave you. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. I I, I have to be careful because I've I've never been there mm -hmm. myself, and um, and I was a bit wary of uh, uh, trying to represent somewhere that I've never been sure. to. But um, so we, we kind of made the piece quite ambiguous, where it it it. Uh, you know, it, it it could be it could be set really in any part of the world. I think, um, <coughs> but uh, yeah. But there was there was something, um, you know, about the the actual uh, uh, what do you call it? Topography is that right? Yeah. The forest. That, um, it's it's kind of grown over volcanic rock. This in Mount Fuji. Um, the, it's it's incredibly difficult to traverse. It's uh, the, the the trees kind of form this canopy, which is why they call it the sea of trees. There's no um, apparently there's no animal sounds. There's no birds. Wow. Song. It's just an incredibly isolating place to go to. So that you know really, just all those aspects really kind of fed into into the music and and also into the movement for the dancers as well. Mm -hmm. Ultimately. And similarly with um, Hurta's song, I mean, you went to St Kilda, is that I right? didn't. I was just thinking that, you know, because uh -huh. for me it was a case of trying to musically, trying musically to evoke a place that I had not been to. Right. But Robin Robertson, the poet that I worked with, visited okay. uh, St Kilda and it was one of the most remarkable experiences of his life, you know, and uh, it left a deep impression on him, which is why he wrote about it. And then for me, it was more, you know, I did a bit of background reading, you know, I looked at pictures, I watched films mm -hmm. at St Kilda, and then I kind of immersed myself in Gaelic music. You know, I'm not a Gaelic speaker, but obviously St Kilda was a Gaelic speaking yeah. territory, and uh, so I wanted the kind of sound world of the music, the settings of Robin's words to kind of evoke this Gaelic musical landscape, you know, so a lot of the tunes are... A lot of the songs are based on old, older Gaelic song tunes and that kind of thing. Um, um, I mean, and how, in, in terms of the relationship with Robin, how did that work? I mean, you worked with him on Ballad of the Books as well, I think. Yeah, that, that was right? the first time we worked together, just on one song, and then it had always been on both of our minds to, to, do, it, to do it again, you know, and it was his idea, really, I think, to, to do the project about St Kilda, because he'd visited, visited the place. You know. So did he you know, come back with the poetry and say, right, here's the words, and you... Yeah, yeah he came back, and he, I think he wrote one long poem that was a kind of, again, it was a topographical poem, it was just a, basically just a litany of kind of place names from St Kilda, you know, like circumnavigating the island, the islands, you know, and naming the places, it's like kind of really resonant kind of Gaelic place names, like rich in kind of folklore and... Uh, but then he, I think he wanted to write stuff which addressed more the human stories from St Kilda. So he, you know, he wrote some more pieces, but he wouldn't have called them. He wouldn't have ever called them poems. You know, there were there was definitely a conscious attempt to write song lyrics oh, okay. rather than poems. Right. And, like that was one of the, that was one aspect of the project for me was like just an awareness of the difference of those kind of art forms of you know writing a poem and writing a, a song lyric. And the, the tunes that you used were the traditional tunes which already had some lyrics to them? Yeah, some of them did, yeah. I mean, there's some instrumental breaks so played by on harp on the album as well, but yeah, so, some of the songs, there's like a... I, I, would, I would just take the, me the melodies from the songs, you know, mm -hmm. um, 
really there's like a piece of mouth music you know and there's a walking song and right there's a there's a sort of elegy you know there's different sort of Gaelic song forms feature on the album the album you did with Barry Morrison which is Urstan mm -hmm. um, that's all Gaelic songs I believe is that right uh, well she sings I think I sing maybe three Scots ballads or three Scots or English songs uh -huh. on the record and the rest is Gaelic. When you're putting music, this might sound, this is from a total new musician here, when you're putting music to um, lyrics that you maybe don't understand, is that a, is it no problem or is it something that is more difficult to do? Well, you, you have to try and understand, you, you know, you have to sort of know what the song means, mm -hmm. you know, so luckily there are, there are good books available, you know, like that would have, I think of Anne, Anne Lauren Gillsey's book, particularly oh, yeah. Songs of Gaelic Scotland, which is a great resource for, for a non-Gaelic speaker because it has really good English notes and English translations of the Gaelic songs. Uh, so I, I used a book like that, you know. Um, in terms of Scot other Scottish music at the moment, uh, is there anything, well, first of all, what, I suppose, what were your inspirations before you started, um, you know, playing yourselves? So many. Um, I mean, for me, uh, I, I, I kind of grew up listening to Van Morrison, so early Van Morrison, Astro Weeks, and um, Reading Fleece, and that kind of thing, and, um, and some Joni Mitchell. So, yeah. As well. So, there was a bit of that. You may be moving back towards that. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But then it, it sort of rolled out, it, it was more. Um, yeah, more of the electronic side of things, um, the kind of ambient artists, uh, to say there's so many, but it's sort of Stars of the Lid. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I shouldn't put people in the spot like this, yeah. I do apologise. <laughs> it's a lot, but um, yeah, it's, it's kind of, a, I mean, it's still a mix. I'll, I'll listen to song songs a lot, but then I'll, I'll happily put on some, uh, some Droning thing <laughs> that lasts an hour and doesn't change change pitch. But. When we um, had uh, interviewed Joe Mango on the podcast, she talked about the music scene in kind of Aberdeen and in, in, in the, the you know East Coast. What, what were your you know reminiscences of it? Um, it's I don't know, people ask me that a few times, and I, I sort of have to. Um, articulate myself without using swear words and you can and swear on this we have an explicit tag <laughs> on this oh, podcast <laughs> well, that no it's, um, it's it's not it's it's improving it's uh, I, I just have some issues with it but uh, I, th I think you know I've said to people before uh, I think it's just this really really fertile um, you know just this great wealth of, of artistic talent and, and not just in music but um, you know, and dance, and theatre, and, and you know, visual art mm -hmm. as well, uh, and, it, and it's great. There's so much talent, and uh, it's just such a lack of support from from the council, yeah. from the city council. Um, it's it's really, it's you know, I think a lot of people, myself included, in the, in the past, you feel like you're just fighting a losing battle, and, um, and I'm sure Aberdeen is not. Sure. Like that. But I know when Wooden Barn opened, mm. it was like a real light in yeah. the area. I mean, suddenly yeah. there was this centre for arts that, again, was not the easiest place to get to, but it was worth making the journey. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And I think, you know, they're, they're, they've just gained such a great reputation um, over the years and they're, and they're attracting you know, bigger names and they're able to do, um, you know, they're still able to do more kind of experimental, really totally out there stuff, whereas, mm. you know, in Lemon Tree in Aberdeen used to be like that, right. but, but now you can look at the programme and it's all these sort of, you know, <laughs> people that you could have swore died 30 years ago. <laughs> 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 you know, some tribute band. Uh, Van Morrison tribute band. Yeah. Rock and Well, I used to, I used to know the, 
Well, I know the guy who used to be at the lemon tree, but maybe maybe he stopped about ten years ago. Maybe that's mm. when it started to change. Like I maybe think this, so. this guy I'm thinking of was doing good stuff then. But, but ma- yeah. yeah, I don't know. Ma- maybe because I don't live in Aberdeen, and because I'm quite interested in Scottish musical history, I always associate Aberdeen and Aberdeenshire with a lot of the great old singers, like like uh, Janie Robertson or Lizzie Higgins and uh, the Stuarts, like Lucy Stewart who, and Elizabeth Stewart, who mm. we were listening yeah. to. Um, so that's a, that's a kind of another kind of current of northeastern culture that I always think of when I'm when I'm up in this. Right, yeah. Up in yeah, this and th- there always seems to be singers or, uh, or musicians who are kind of known locally and are really well respected, but we haven't heard of them else. Mm. Well, so in Scotland, that's my experience. So. Yeah, I made me think of that fiddler Paul Anderson that we met. That's right. Yeah. He's, 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 he seems really knowledgeable about nor- various northeastern fiddle traditions, you know. But maybe because his his uh, area of knowledge and interest is so geographically specific, mm. right? There won't be much interest outside that area unless it's people who are really interested in fiddle music, you know. <laughs> I wonder if something similar might happen, maybe it is happening, as what happened with recently with the Border Ballads, where um, my part of my family are from the Borders and would know a lot of these songs, and you know when we were kids we would learn them, but now they're actually being looked at seriously and being you know performed again and, and, and discovered. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. And um, what about your own kind of influences um, uh-huh. or inspiration? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, a, a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, as a s- in terms of songwriting, you know, I was always, always a huge fan of Leonard Cohen. You know, since I was a teenager, and I still listen to his music. Well, you know, some of my favourite songwriters. Yeah. But then you know, I listen to a lot of different things, and yeah, in, in terms of, you know, I felt it necessary at times to sort of absorb a lot of s- Scottish music, singers particularly, because you know, I'm I'm a singer. I don't mm-hmm. only listen to singers, but. Interested in those old songs, so some of those singers, those Aberdeenshire singers that I've mentioned, mm-hmm. but then singers from all parts of Scotland. Yeah. You know, listen to a lot of. Gone through phases of just listening to a lot of old archive recordings, you know, stuff like the the recordings which were held at the School of Scottish Studies in Edinburgh. You know, the recordings made from the fifties onwards by Hamish Henderson. So those kind of those kind of things. And, but yeah, maybe some electronic stuff as well. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, like uh, uh, we talked a bit, a bit about uh, William Basinski last sweet, time, yeah, and, and uh, I know, but yeah, I never totally gave my heart to electronic music for whatever <laughs> reason. <laughs> um, I mean, when we first started talking, you know, you said it's difficult to, to categorise and say to people, you know, you do electronic music, you do, you know, folk music, acoustic music, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, do you find that as, as musicians kind of frustrating? But like why do well, you have to be, you know, labelled in this way? Well, I mean, in this project, it's just been like two people in a room making music and mm-hmm. questions of genre or whatever, you know, or questions of how the sounds are being generated becomes kind of irrelevant, mm-hmm. you know, to me. It's not about the past. It's not about your in- influence. It's just what about, it's about what's happening in the moment. Yeah. So. Yeah. But then, well, you know, when it gets a release you'll see what section it comes under in, you know, alt folk or something. Or, yeah. mm-hmm. and I, 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 just, I, I, I suppose it's a necessary thing, but it always interests me how people decide to, not just musicians, writers or, or artists around this morning. As you say, the collaboration in different ways and learning from different people is yeah. something, the most interesting thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think I, I, in the first week or the, for the first couple of days, uh, you know, playing the harmonium or playing keyboard playing sort of piano sounds and keyboard and having a, a couple of moments of like oh, this is this isn't electronic you know like, <laughs> and not you know not, I was really enjoying it but um, it was almost like I, I was kind of hearing some sort of tutting voice and it's like no that's that's not what's expected of you but um, that's interesting but that's, that quickly locked that out for me I have to say that a lot a lot of your processes and a lot of the, th- the, th- the ways that Ross works are kind of mystifying to me. Like I just don't know about that world at all. Like I, you know the, the the laptop stuff. I'm I'm kind of a luddite. You know I, I basically sing and play guitar, but sometimes I kick myself about that. You know I think like I should be embracing 
contemporary technology more than I do, you know. Kind of stuck well, in the past. Well, maybe this is perfect collaboration <laughs> after all. <laughs> when it comes to I mean, I feel like I've got a lot to learn from work, working with Ross, you know. So. We should, um, we, we should maybe like, swap our instruments. Swap instruments and see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see how, how that turns out. Yeah. That would be the ex- experimental phase. Um, other stuff at the moment, you know, is there anything that, that's kind of exciting you that's uh, around just now? Um, yeah, there must be. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel, I don't know, I feel like I've be, been up here a week and I feel yeah, like there's nothing else going is, on. Is, yeah, isolated in a way, I don't have a radio here and so what, uh, I feel, feel a bit out of touch, so that's maybe why I can't think immediately. I mean, I always think of just what my friends are doing friends of mine in Glasgow, yeah. bands that they're in, music that they're projects that they're involved in. So just maybe just my immediate surroundings in Glasgow, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we could have come up and told Jenneth and then uh, the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> <that happened. laughs> um, what about yourself? Is there anything that, you know? Uh, no, I think I'm up in the house. I sort of feel like a week in the country has done something to my head. Uh, it's understandable you can kind of you know focus on your own stuff. You know. Yeah. I mean, I th- you know, the reason for asking is because I think at the moment there's a lot of excellent music you know going on. I think there's some really interesting stuff, and I don't you know particularly in what people would call folk music, trembling bells, and Odin's picnic and bands like that. Yeah. They're really doing some interesting stuff. Mm. That's what I mean about people in Glasgow. I mean, I know those guys you're mm-hmm. talking about, and I also think of a friend Stevie Jones' project, Sound of Yell, that he's just been working on. That. He's got an album coming out later this year on Chemical Underground. It's really great. It's mostly like an instrumental music. It's kind of unclassifiable. A lot of musicians involved in it, and it's kind of like it's kind of like he's drawn together a lot of what's really great about the Glasgow music scene. You know, mm-hmm. the music seems to really reflect a certain Glasgow spirit to me. Um, I think that's right. I think there is a kind of spirit uh, at the moment, um, which is quite exciting. Um, Okay, what would you know? Have you got projects that you're doing even at the moment or next or anything you can tell us? My next uh, thing I'm working on is uh, is probably the most exciting thing I've ever done. I've been commissioned to write a piece about granite. <laughs> granite? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, who's commissioned this? <laughs> can we ask? <laughs> it's. Um, <clears throat> If, anyone who, <laughs> if there's anyone who hasn't been to Aberdeen, it's the perfect. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, if, well, if you want, it makes sense. It's, yeah. it's the Scottish Scottish sculpture workshop near in uh, Lumsden, um, and uh, they had just approached me and commissioned me to to write a piece about to do some kind of piece about granite. It could be like an installation, you could have sort of visual element, something like that, but. The remit was I had to find a way of making it interesting. So uh, <laughs> I can see the look in your face. Yeah. <laughs> still, I'm still working on that one. You yeah. see, on a, on a nice day when the sun's glinting on the granite, it's it's be- Aberdeen is beautiful. <laughs> it's really beautiful. It's yeah. That's you know that that's, that's like a, an emperor's new clothes thing. It's, people say that. Are you just used to it? You feel <laughs> yeah. Like, I agree with Alice. I used to go up and visit my, when my brother was in Aberdeen. Go up and say, "Oh, this is all right." But maybe if you've lived there day after day, oppressed by seagulls. <laughs> well, um, are you doing something as interesting as that? <laughs> well, I made a new record in in December last last December. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to come out in January on Drag City. Uh, okay, just ten new songs. And is it yourself? Only, or are you working with other people? It's uh, it kind of started off as a solo project, and then I got some friends in to do some overdubs. So there's some a guy called Alex South does some clarinet, and then a friend of mine called Donald Lindsay plays some tin whistle, and then there's actually uh, some of the guys from Tremlin Bells and Mildoon's Picnic oh, right. come and s- sang some four part harmony vocals on a couple of songs. Okay. But otherwise, it's, apart from that, it's pretty stripped down. I think the record is, is just going to be self-titled. Right. I just there's, there's a couple of albums called Alistair Roberts and Friends, I believe. Already. Yeah, there's a couple of credit. Uh, yeah, but I, I've never. I get made the a feeling record. you don't really want to work on your own, <laughs> so, yeah. which is no bad thing. But I like the idea of you. Know, 
get someone else into work with. Well, th this one feels like a solo record, even though it's not yeah. really, you know, it just feels like that, you know. But yeah, I think it's just going to be self-titled. Okay. Well, I think we will uh, leave it there. But uh, thanks to both of you for doing this. Really appreciate Fine. it. Thanks. Thank you. And we'll be back next time with someone uh, completely different. Cheers. Yeah.